to your favourite teacher. Today we'll be looking at a brief plot summary and introducing you to some of the context behind possibly the best known love story of all time, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Firstly, the prologue is like an introduction. It gives the audience a brief summary of what's going to come in the play. It really needs a spoiler alert. So, we learn that two families, Capulets and Montagues, have a long-running family feud, which rears its ugly head when one teenager from each family ends up falling in love. We also learn that they will commit suicide as a result of becoming entangled in this feud. Only after the suicide do the families realise what they've done and end the feud. Based on this alone, we can ask the audience, is this going to be a play about love or hate? Act 1. Act 1 opens with a fight between the two families, stopped by the prince. Meanwhile, Romeo, a Montague, is lovesick because he is rejected by Rosaline. He tells his best friend Benvolio that he will never love again and he's heartbroken. Over the Capulets, Paris asks Lord Capulet if he can marry his daughter Juliet. Capulet says he will think about it. They throw a ball later that night, Romeo and Benvolio decide to gatecrash the party and Romeo meets Juliet. At this point, he forgets his love for Rosaline and decides he loves Juliet instead. I know, typical man, right? The pair end up kissing without realising who their families are. They find this out later. Brutal. Act 2. It's still the night of the ball, with Romeo sneaking into the Capulet's garden to see Juliet. He finds her on the balcony, talking to herself about her love for him. Entranced by her, Romeo makes himself known and they decide to get married. from Friar Lawrence, who agrees. He sends word to Juliet through her nurse and they get married that afternoon in secret. Act 3. At the start of Act 3, there's another fight between the Capulets and the Montagues. This time, Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, kills Mercutio. In anger, Romeo then kills Tybalt. As a consequence, he is banished from Verona by the prince. Romeo and Juliet spend the night together before Romeo leaves. Upon his departure, the Capulets tell Juliet that they've arranged for her to marry Paris, unaware that she is already married to Romeo. The wedding is arranged for two days' time, whether she likes it or not. Act 4. Upset, she asks Friar Lawrence for help and he comes up with a plan. Juliet is to go back to her parents and tell them that she will happily marry Paris. She then takes a sleeping potion, faking her own death. Whilst this is happening, Friar Lawrence sends word to Romeo of their plan, telling him to come to the Capulet's tomb in time for the potion to wear off so that they can run away together. Act 5. Unfortunately, Romeo does not receive Friar Lawrence's letter. That would just be too easy. Instead, he hears that Juliet is dead and rushes to her tomb on a suicidal mission. Paris sees Romeo as he's making his way to the tomb. The pair fight and Romeo ends up killing him as well. Inside the tomb, Romeo sees what he thinks is his dead love and takes a poison to kill himself. Friar Lawrence has finally realised that Romeo didn't get his letter, but he is too late and arrives at the tomb just as Juliet is waking. Unsure of what to do, he runs away, leaving a heartbroken Juliet who ends up killing herself. The Montagues and Capulets finally realise that their feud was silly and decide to make peace. A little bit too late. Now, here's some context. I won't go into too much detail here because I'll talk about how it links to certain characters and themes in some later videos. But here's just a little bit to get you started. At the time in which the play was written, there definitely wasn't gender equality. Females were meant to be passive and accepting, so Juliet refusing to marry Paris and disobeying her parents was a really big deal. 
Also, Juliet was only 13 at the time, which was a normal age for women to marry. Violence was fairly normal for men. The more violent they were, the more they were praised. And finally, wealthy families often had nurses to look after the children. They became like a second mother to them, seeing as their biological ones were out enjoying themselves at parties. As I said, there will be more context as I talk through some key characters and themes, but for now, this video should help you establish a firm understanding of the plot and the initial context. I'm Miss Meeks, thanks for watching.